Mysore literature in Kannada is a body of literature composed in the Kannada language in the historical kingdom of Mysore in southern India and written in the Kannada script. The writings date from the Kingdom of Mysore, which existed from around 1600 CE until the establishment of modern India in 1947. Many of the works of this literature written on religious themes are labelled Virashaiva or Vaishnava in acknowledgement of the two faiths that gave form to the literature and fostered it until the advent of the modern era. Despite a gradual decline in the popularity of Jainism, authors devoted to the faith produced some works of merit. Secular themes dealing with a wide range of subjects were also written on. Kannada literature flourished for a short while in the court of the neighboring kingdom of the Nayakas of Kaladi, whose territory was annexed by Mysore in 1763. During an age of revival and innovation, some Mysore court poets brought back the classical shampoo, a composition in prose verse, a form of writing that had prevailed in Kannada prior to the 13th century, and initiated writings on contemporary history. Yakshagana, a native form of dramatic literature meant for a rustic audience, consolidated in the coastal and Malnad hill regions in the 16th century and gained popularity thereafter, and spread to Mysore and Yelandar. The literature of the itinerant Haridasas, popular in the 15th and 16th century, was revived in the 18th and 19th century, and had a strong influence on devotionalism in the Kannada-speaking regions. The Vachana poetic tradition was repopularized by some poets while others wrote anthologies and doctrines based on the 12th century Virashaiva canon. Social developments in the 19th century brought the influence of English literature and classical Sanskrit literature, resulting in the birth of modern prose, prose narrative, and theatrical literature. The men of letters in the Mysore royal court included not only the court poets, who were often quite prolific, but also on occasion the rulers themselves. In the post-Vijayanagara period, a new kind of lyrical poetry, one unaffiliated with the royal court, and written by maverick poets was gaining popularity. A wide range of meters, indigenous and Sanskritic, were popular including Tripadi three-line verse, Shatpadi six-line verse, and Saptapadi seven-line verse meters, and Gadya prose. Topic: <laughs> Pre-16th century literature. By the mid-16th century, Kannada literature had been influenced by three important socio-religious developments, Jainism 9th -12th centuries, Virashaivism devotion to the god Shiva, from the 12th century, and Vaishnavism devotion to the god Vishnu, from the 15th century. In addition, writings on secular subjects remained popular throughout this period. Jain works were written in the classical shampoo meter and were centered on the lives of Tirthankars saints, princes and personages associated with the Jainism. The early Virashaiva literature 1150 to 1200 CE comprising pithy poems called vachanas lit utterance or saying which propagated devotion to the god Shiva were written mostly as prose poems and to a lesser extent in the Tripadi meter from the 13th century, Virashaiva writers made the saints of the 12th century the protagonists of their writings and established native meters such as the Rigali lyrical compositions in blank verse and the Shatpadi. The Vaishnava writers of the 15th and early 16th century Vijayanagara Empire consisted of the Brahmin commentators who wrote under royal patronage, and the itinerant Haridasas, saint poets who spread the philosophy of Madhvacharya using simple Kannada in the form of melodious songs. The Haridasa poets used genres such as the Kirthane compositions based on rhythm and melody, the Saladi rhythm based, and the Ugaboga melody based. Overall, Kannada writings had changed from marga formal to desi vernacular and become more accessible to the commoner. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Developments from 16th century. Court and monastic literature After the decline of the Vijayanagara Empire, the centers of Kannada literary production shifted to the courts of the emerging independent states, at Mysore and Kaladi. The Kingdom of Kaladi was centered at Kaladi and nearby Akari in the modern Shivamaga district. At their peak, their domains included the coastal, hill and some interior regions of modern Karnataka. Writers in the Kaladi court authored important works on Virashaiva doctrine. The Kaladi territories and that of smaller chiefs were eventually absorbed into the Kingdom of Mysore by 1763. 
The unique aspect of the Mysore court was the presence of numerous multilingual writers, some of whom were Virashivas. They were often adept in Telugu and Sanskrit, in addition to Kannada. The Virashiva monasteries that had sprung up in various regions including Mysore, Tumkur, Chitradurga and Bangalore sought to spread their influence beyond the Kannada-speaking borders. Sadakshara Deva, a Virashiva writer, tried to rejuvenate the classical shampoo style of writing. The Shravaishnava a sect of Vaishnavism writers, who were dominant in the Mysore court, maintained a literary style that was conventional and conservative while proliferating lore and legend. A spurt in Vaishnava writings resulted in new renderings of the epics, the Mahabharata, the Bhagavata and no fewer than three versions of the Ramayana. Prior to the 17th century, information about royal genealogy and achievements had been recorded mostly on versified inscriptions. Beginning with the 17th century, with the consolidation of the feudatory of Mysore into an independent kingdom, historical and biographical writings became popular. A number of such works were penned by the court poets in the 17th and early 18th century, most notably, Tirumalarya II and Chikupdaya. Some of these writings would later serve as valuable research and source material for modern-day historians. Folk and didactic literature Yakshagana lit. Songs of the Demi -gods", is a composite folk dance drama or folk theatre of southern India which combines literature, music, dance and painting into. The best known forms of this art are from the Dakshina Kannada, Udupi district, Uttara Kannada and to some extent from the Shimoga district of modern Karnataka. There are a variety of dance dramas collectively termed as Yakshagana. The Yakshagana Tenkudatu lit. Yakshagana of the Southern Style is popular primarily in the Mangalore region and the Yakshagana Badagadatu Bailada lit. Yakshagana of Northern Style performed outdoors is popular in Udupi and surrounding regions. Other art forms also grouped under Yakshagana are the Nagamandalam, a dance meant to appease the deity Naga, and a variety of Buddha spirit dances. The Yakshagana Tenkudatu is more akin to the classical Kathakali of Kerala. According to modern Kannada writer Shivarama Karan, the region between Udupi and Akari could be where the Yakshagana of the northern style originated. However, he noted that the earliest forms of dance drama, called the Gandharagrama, are mentioned in the writing Narada Siska dated to 600 200 BCE. This primitive form developed into Ekalagana. A term which appears in the 12th century Kannada writings Malanathapurana c. 1105, by Nagachandra and the Chandraprabha Purana c. 1189, by Agala. According to the scholar M. M. Bhatt, Chitana, a native composition adaptable to singing and mentioned in Kavirajamarga c. 850 could be considered the earliest known forerunner of the Kannada Yakshaganas. An epigraph of c. 1565 from Bellary describes a grant to a troupe of Tala Madale performers. The earliest available manuscript containing Yakshagana plays is Virata Parva c. 1565 by Vishnu of Brahmavara in South Kanara, and Sugrava Vijaya mid -16th century by Kandukuru Rudrakavi. The earliest available edition of Yakshagana plays, Sabaparva, is dated to c. 1621. Haridasa Sahitya, the devotional literature of the Vaishnava saints of Karnataka, flourished in the 15th and 16th centuries under the guidance of such saint poets as Vyasatirtha, Parandara Dasa, father of Carnatic music, and Kanaka Dasa. This period, according to the scholars M. V. Kamath and V. B. Kerr, may be called its classical period. This literature was revived in the 18th and 19th centuries. According to musicologist Selina Thielman, the Vaishnava Bhakti devotion movement, which started with the 6th century Alvars of modern Tamil Nadu and spread northwards, reached its peak influence on South Indian devotionalism with the advent of the Haridasas of Karnataka. The Haridasa poetry, which bears some structural similarities to devotional songs of northern and eastern India, is preserved in written textual form but the musical compositions in which they are rendered have been passed down orally. These songs have remained popular with the members of the Madhva religious order even in the modern age. Vijaya Dasa, Gopala Dasa and Jagannatha Dasa are the most prominent among the saint poets belonging of the didactic period. The scholar Mutalik classifies Haridasa devotional songs into the following categories. 
biographical, socio-religious, ethical and ritualistic, didactic and philosophical, meditative, narrative and eulogistic and miscellaneous." Their contribution to Hindu mysticism and the Bhakti literature is similar to the contributions of the Alvars and Nainmars of modern Tamil Nadu and that of the devotional saint poets of Maharashtra and Gujarat. According to the scholar H.S. Shiva Prakash, about 300 saint poets from this cadre enriched Kannada literature during the 18th-19th century. After a break of more than three centuries, writing of Vachana poems was revived. Though some poets such as Tantata Siddhalingayati Swatantra Siddhalingaswara Ganalingadeva Shanmaka Swami Kadasadaswara and Kadakolu Madhavalapa attempted to repopularize the tradition with noteworthy pieces, they lacked the mastery of the 12th century social reformers. The most notable of the later day Vachanakaras lit. Vachana poets were undoubtedly Sarvina and Sisanala Sharif late 18th century. Sarvina is known to have lived sometime between the mid-16th century and the late 17th century. Though the Vachana poetic tradition had come to a temporary halt, the creation of anthologies and commentaries based on the earlier Vachana canon, depicting the 12th century Virashaiva saints as its protagonists, became popular from around c. 1400. Among well-known 16th-century anthologists were Chanaviracharya and Singalata Sadabhasava who interpreted the Vachanas from a purely philosophical and metaphysical context. In the Kaladi court, notable works on doctrine, such as Virasavadharma Siramani crest jewel of the moral order of the Virashivas, and Virasivananda Chandrike moonlight to delight the Virashivas, were written. A new genre of mystic Kaivalya literature, a synthesis of the Virashaiva and the Advaita monistic philosophy, consolidated from the 16th century onwards. While the most famous writings are ascribed to Niyaguna Shivayogi c. 1500, later day writers such as Mahalingaranga in Shatpati meter, c. 1675, and Chidanandavaduta Jnana Sindhu are also notable. Modern literature The birth of modern expression in the Kannada language can be traced to the early 19th century, a transition that in later decades included the influence of English literature on local traditions. The earliest examples of modern literature came in the form of prose, either inspired by or renderings of Sanskrit classics, in the court of King Krishnaraja Wodyar III. The king himself was an accomplished Kannada writer to whom is ascribed the prose romance Saugandika Paranaya. Under the patronage of the king, Kempu Narayana wrote Mudramanjusha, The Seal Casket, 1823, a historical novel and an innovative version of the Sanskrit original, Mudrarakshasa by Vishaka Datta. This work is considered the trailblazer in modern Kannada prose, English language education, the role of missionaries, their translation of the Bible into Kannada in 1820, the arrival of the printing press, publication of newspapers and periodicals and the earliest Kannada English and English Kannada dictionaries helped to modernize Kannada prose. Development of prose narrative came by way of translations of Christian classics, such as Yatrakana Sanchara The Pilgrim's Progress, 1847. Dramatic literature got its impetus from translations of Sanskrit and English classics Shakuntala in 1869, Macbeth, King Lear and Romeo and Juliet. The modern novel, with a reformist outlook, was born in 1892. This milestone was followed by the earliest social plays with similar themes, a trend that had already set roots in the modern literature of Marathi and Bengali languages. Mudana or Nandalike Lakshminarayana stands out as a unique writer, whose language is old Kannada but whose sensibilities are modern. His two important works were Adbhuta Ramayana 1895 and Ramaswamedam 1898. The latter work is historically important to prose development, ancient epic is handled from a modern viewpoint. The narrator is the author and the listener his wife. Mudana's declaration Padyam Vadyam, Gadyam Ridyam lit. Poetry deserves killing whereas prose reaches the heart," summarizes the trends in Kannada literature in the late 19th century. <laughs> 17th century writings <laughs> Transition from Vijayanagara 
With the waning of the Vijayanagara Empire, Raja Wodyar I became the first ruler of political importance at Mysore, having ousted the Vijayanagara governor at Srirangapatna. However, the fledgling kingdom still owed nominal allegiance to the diminished empire. The foundation of an independent state that would influence regional polity and culture was laid in this period. In the following decades, the Mysore court became the inheritor of the Vijayanagara literary legacy and a centre for textual production not only in Kannada, the native language, but to some extent, even in Telugu and Sanskrit. The earliest available Kannada language writings from the Mysore court are by Tirumalarya I or Tiryamala Iyengar, Raja Wodyar I's court poet. He composed the Karna Vratanta Kata c. 1600 in Sangatya meter, a composition rendered to the accompaniment of an instrument. Raja Wodyar I's grandson, Chamaraja V r. is the earliest among the Mysore kings known for their personal contribution to the fine arts. The king wrote Chamarajokti Vilasa, a translation of the Sanskrit Ramayana, in the Valmiki tradition, during the rule of King Kantharava Narasaraja Wodyar I the kingdom attained complete freedom, as evidenced from the issue of gold coins called phantoms, similar to ones issued by the Vijayanagara Empire. This event was followed by a period of political expansion within modern southern Karnataka and a successful military encounter against the invading Mughal commander Ranadula Khan. Govinda Vaidya, the most well-known poet in the royal court, wrote Kantharava Narasaraja Vijaya in Sangatya meter. In this eulogy, written in 26 chapters, Vaidya compares his patron king to God Narasimha, an avatar of the Hindu god Vishnu. The writing also gives useful details about the kingdom, its social events, urban life, the king's court, the types of music composed by the court musicians and the instruments they used to render them. During this time, Bhattakalanka Deva, a Jain writer from Hadavali in South Kanara excelled as a grammarian of extraordinary talent. He was the last of the three notables who wrote comprehensively on old Kannada grammar Nagavarma II and Kashiraja being the other two. He was an expert in Sanskrit grammar as well. His extant Kannada grammar, Karnataka Sabdanasasanam, containing 592 Sanskrit sutras a literary form written for concision with vriti glossary and vyaya commentary, is written in four padas chapters and makes useful references to contemporary and earlier writers. His work is modeled after that of earlier Sanskrit grammarians, Panini, Pujyapada and others, and is considered an exhaustive work. The author's emphasis on the importance of Kannada language and its rich literary and poetic history is evident and was meant to be a rebuttal to the attitude shown by contemporary Sanskrit scholars towards Kannada language. Shadaksharadeva, who attempted to revive the classical Sanskritized shampoo meter, belonged to the Pampa tradition. A Virashaiva by faith and the head of the Yelandar monastery, he was under the patronage of the Mysore court. A bilingual writer in Sanskrit and Kannada, his writings propagate his faith in the god Shiva. He wrote three well-known works in Kannada, Rikashakara Vilasa his best-known poetic work, written during his early days, has love as the main theme and rivals the poems in Lakshmisa's Jaimini Bharata 17th century. It is derived from a well-known devotional Tamil story of Satendra Chola and is known to be based on an earlier work, Bhavachintaratna by Kannada writer Gubi Malinaria of Vijayanagara. In a noteworthy piece of elegiac poetry, the poet describes the lamentation of a mother in his own inimitable style. Upon hearing the news of her son's death by trampling under the hooves of Prince Rajashikara's horse, the mother rushes to the scene, and mourns, holding the body of her son in her lap. Vrishabhendra Vijaya a poem of epic proportions, written in 42 cantos and 4,000 stanzas, is an account of the 12th-century reformer Basavana. Sabarasankara Vilasa is a poem in five cantos narrating a popular tale of the battle between the god Shiva and the Pandava prince Arjuna. To test Arjuna's devotion to him, Shiva disguises himself as a hunter and fights a fierce battle with Arjuna. Toward the end, impressed with Arjuna's devotion, Shiva bestows on him a weapon called Pashuptastra. Other notable Kannada writers in the court of Kantharava Narasaraja I are, 1637-1659 were Shantavira Dashika Shivaganga Charitra in Sangatya meter, 1650, Bhaskara on mathematics, early 17th century, Nanjakavi Kantharava Narasaraja Charitra, a historical, early 17th century and Timurasa Markandeya Ramayana, the story of the god 
Prasad Rama which forms an episode in the forest section of the epic Mahabharata, c. 1650. Chamaya, a court poet, wrote an account of his patron, King Dada Devaraja Wodyar in Devarajendra Sangatya late 17th century, and Chanarya wrote a metrical history of the same king in Devaraja Vijaya late 17th century. Tirumalabada, a court poet of the Kaladi ruler Hariya Venkatapa Nayaka wrote the poem Shivagita. Golden Age The reign of King Chika Devaraja Wodyar is a high point in the early history of the Kingdom of Mysore. The king, an able warrior known to have defeated even the Marathas on occasion, held the upper hand against the Nizam of Golconda and brought the Kaladi territories under his domain by 1682. An able administrator, the king was inclined towards the Shravaishnava faith. His reign produced numerous prolific writers, not the least the king himself, he was an accomplished scholar in Kannada and a composer of music. A well-known treatise on music called Gita Gopala, written in opera style and in the Saptapati meter, is credited to him. Though inspired by Jayadeva's Gita Govinda c. 1200, it had an originality of its own. The work differs from the original in that the god Krishna and his Gopikas are the protagonists of the play instead of Krishna and his consort Radha. The writing consists of 14 sections, with seven songs in each section. It is considered an asset to students of music and literature. The king's other works are commentaries on the Bhagavata and the later chapters of the epic Mahabharata, a collection of devotional poems written in 30 verses King's Petition, and composed in praise of the god Chelava Narayana Swami of Melkote, Tirumalarya II, a native of Srirangapatna and a descendant of Tirumalarya I, was held in high esteem in the Mysore court. A childhood friend of the king Chika Devaraja, he served as his minister. Tirumalarya II authored five notable writings, Chika Devaraja Saptapati Saptapati Meter, 1698, an important musical treatise rendered in seven sections comprising 52 songs which exalts the patron king to the level of God on Earth, Apratimavira Charite, History of the Peerless Hero, a rhetorical eulogy of the king and a treatise on poetics, Chikadevaraja Vijaya, an account of the king's conquests, his life and his ancestors, in the shampoo meter comprising six chapters, Chikadevaraya Yaso Bhushana, and the prose piece Chikadevaraja Vamshavali, one of the earliest available contemporary historicals in Kannada language describing the king's ancestry. In addition, Tirumalarya II composed 70 songs, most of which are in Kannada and a few in Telugu. Minister Chikupadaya or Lakshmipathi, a native of Tarakanambi town in Mysore district was a zealous Shravaishnava and one of the most prolific Kannada writers of his time. To his credit are over 30 works, mostly in the Sangatya and Shampu meters, and Gadya prose. His best known works are Vishnupurana prose and shampoo versions 1691 Divya Suri Charitre a history of the 12 Alvar saints Artha Panchaka five truths on Saint Pillai Lokacharya a commentary on Tiruvayamoli of Saint Namalvar Kamalashala Mahatmaya 1680 Hastagiri Mahatmaya 1679 Rukmangada Charite 1681 Satvakabrama Vidya Vilasa treating on the Visishtadvaita philosophy Yadugiri Mahatmaya a eulogy of Saint Kadambi Srirangacharya Yadavagiri Mahatmaya a eulogy of Saint Kadambi Lakshmanacharya and a collection of 70 songs called Shringarada Hadagalu in praise of his patron Chika Devaraja pen name Chikadevaraja Lakshmisa a superb storyteller a dramatist and a Vaishnava by faith is one of the most well-known writers of kavya's narrative poems Kannada scholar HS Shiva Prakash opines he lived in the mid 16th century but R Narasimacharya and historian Nilakanta Sastri claim he was active in the late 17th century probably during the rule of King Chika Devaraja his Jaimini Bharata, written in Shatpati meter, is the poet's Kannada version of the Hindu epic Mahabharata and is one of the most popular poems of the late medieval age. A collection of stories, the epic poem contains the famous tale of the Sita Paradyaga, repudiation of Sita. The author has succeeded in converting a religious story into a very human tale, making it popular even in modern times. For his deft usage of the language, the poet earned the honorific Upamalola lit one of revels in similes and metaphors. 
Singaraya, a brother of Tirumalaria II, wrote Mitravinda Govinda 1680, the earliest available classical drama in Kannada. It is a play inspired by the Sanskrit drama Ratnavali Pearl Necklace", by King Harsha of Kannauj. Among notable women poets, Srirangama wrote Padmini Kalyana Marriage of Padmini", and Sanchi Hanama, a Vakaliga from Yelander, wrote Hadabadeya Dharma, on the duties of a faithful wife. This work, which won her many accolades, is in nine sections, containing 479 stanzas, and is written in Sangatya meter. Despite being employed as a beetle bag bearer and as a maid to Queen Devajamani, she claimed Alasingaraya, a court poet, her guru. Her work narrates the struggles of women in society, and stresses their need to fulfill their daily roles in family life. Other writers under the patronage of King Chika Devaraja were Chidananda, a Jain poet, wrote philosophical compositions called Tatwada Kirtanagalu, Nidhi N. Ramaya, and Munivamsha Budaya in Sangatya meter, Vaikunda Dasa, a native of Baylor, composed curtains on the god Vishnu. Pen name, Vaikunta and songs such as Kapadamata, Timakavi Hari Vilasa in Sangatya meter and Yadavajiri Mahatmaya, 1677, Malakarjuna Mahatmaya, 1678, and Malarasa Charite. Some Brahmin writers worthy of mention from the 17th century are Ramachandra Asrasastra, Tirumalavadiya Uttara Ramayana, 1650, Nagarasa of Pandharpur Bhagavajate, Timarasa Shetraganita on Geometry, and Venkayarya, a Haridasa of Penukanda among Jains, Pamana Pandita Samushchaya and Chandrashakara Ramachandra Charitra, story of the Hindu god Rama are notable. Among Virashaiva writers, Harisvara Prabhudeva Purana, Siddhanajansa, Raghavanka Charitra and Gururaja Charitra, Prasabhushana or Pemaseti, Guru Bhaktandara Charitre, Mamadi Tama Sankara Samhita, Parvatesvara Chatvacharya Purana and Sejaya Siddhalingaraya Malayaraja Charite are well known. Age of Sarvina A mendicant Virashaiva poet, a moralist and a drifter whose early days are unclear, Sarvina lit. The All -knowing, has left his indelible mark on Kannada literature and the Kannada-speaking people. He is known to have been a native of either Abalar or Madagamasuru in the Darwad district. Based on literary evidence scholars place him variously between the 16th and 18th centuries. Prabhu Prasad of the Sahitya Akademi feels he belonged to the 16th century while Kannada scholars R. Narasimacharya and H. S. Shiva Prakash claim he lived in the 17th century. To Sarvina goes the credit of revitalizing the Vachana poetic tradition. His witty and didactic poems, numbering over 2,000, were written using the simple tripadi meter. Some clues in his first 14 of a series of poems, Reminiscences of Birth, Give an indication about his birth, parentage and his reasons for leaving home at an early age. His poems after the 14th focus on his spiritual quest, Sarvina, who is not known to have acquired a formal education, gained knowledge from the world, writing poems impromptu about the nature of people and places. According to the scholar Niker, Sarvina was born to sing the truth and truth alone. His poems cover a vast range of topics, from caste and religion to economics and administration, from arts and crafts to family life and health. People from a broad spectrum of life were commented upon. Professionals such as priests, astrologers, sorcerers, tax collectors and accountants, artisans such as smiths, carpenters, tailors and potters, and businessmen such as oil men, money lenders, fishermen and farmers. All have caught the poet's discerning eye. Sarvina reserved his compliments only for the farmers, weavers, real spiritual seekers and chaste housewives. A tomb in Hirekurur town in the Haveri district is said to be his final resting place. His poems, all of which end with his name, Sarvina, constitute some of Kannada's most popular works. Sarvina is to Kannada language what Bhartarhari is to Sanskrit language, Vemana is to Telugu and Thiruvallavar is to Tamil. Neither was he patronized by royalty nor did he write for fame or money. His main aim was to instruct people about morality with poems such as these. A begging bowl in hand, a vast land to wander in. The great god Shiva to guard me. What cause have I to fear, O Sarvina? Even as the tongue manages, surrounded be the teeth, so should the good. Live among the wicked, Sarvina.
Topic: 18th century writings. Topic: Proliferation of Yakshagana. During the first half of the 18th century Mysore's independence was delicately balanced, with the incumbent kings accepting either a nominal subordination or a strategic alliance with the larger power, the Mughals of northern India, by paying tribute while keeping the Marathas of the Deccan Plateau at bay. From the 1830s, the kings also came under the sway of the powerful Dalavoy or Dalway, Prime Minister Nanjaraja or Nanyarajaya and Sarvatakari Chief Minister Devaraja or Devarajaya, the influential Kalale brothers of Nanjangud. During this period, literary contributions were made by some members of the royal family including King Narasaraja Wodyar II, Nanjaraja and Queen Chelavambe, Yakshagana, a rustic form of theatre which draws upon themes from the Hindu epics, the Ramayana, the Mahabharata and the Bhagavata, has an established history in the Kannada-speaking region of over 400 years. In its rudimentary form, the script of the play contains prasanga poetic songs sung by the Bhagavata musician, to which improvised matu dialogue is added. Witty comments are interjected by hasayagaras clowns. Musical instruments include madale and chende types of drums, and a sruti harmonium-like instrument. The rangasthala acting arena could be a temple compound, an open space near the patron's house or a clearing in a paddy field. The Sugrava Vijaya mid century by Kandukuru Rudrakavi is one of the earliest available manuscripts of a Yakshagana play. It is based on the story of the ape-like humanoid king Sugrava who overthrew his powerful brother Vali to regain his kingdom in the Hindu epic Ramayana. While scholars such as M. M. Bhatt, Shivarama Karanth and R. R. Diwakar have proposed various theories about the origin and forerunners of the Yakshagana art. N. Venkata Rao, editor of the Southern School in Telugu Literature, 1960, gives the credit of writing the earliest available Yakshagana plays that include Sangeeta music, Mataka drama, and Natya dance to the polyglot king of Mysore, Narasaraja II, R. 1704 The king was proficient in Kannada, Sanskrit, Telugu, Tamil, and Prakrit. His 14 Yakshagana compositions, written in various languages but in the Kannada script, were discovered at the Government Manuscripts Library in Chennai. By the early 19th century, Yakshagana had become popular in Mysore and nearby Yelander, where stage troops were active. <laughs> Revival of Haridasa literature The Haridasa literature propagates the Dvaita dualistic philosophy of Madhvacharya. Their compositions have also been of immense value to the development of music and literature in general. While Hari a form of God Vishnu is central to their beliefs, their compositions show tolerance to other Vaishnava deities as well. By bringing the values cherished in the Upanishads scripture and Vedas Hindu sacred texts to the commoner in simple Kannada, these itinerant Haridasas made valuable contributions as minstrels of God. With the passing of the Vijayanagara era, the creation of the Haridasa literature slowed down for about a century, despite attempts by two dasa devotee poets, Mahapati Dasa who wrote 600 compositions, and his son Krishna Dasa. The tradition however recovered in the early 18th century under the able guidance of Vijaya Dasa a native of Sikalaparavi in the Raichur district. Vijaya Dasa was inspired by the establishment of the monastery of St. Raghavendra Swami of the Madhvacharya order at Mantralayam town. His lyrical compositions, said to be 25,000 in all, are written in the Parandara Dasa tradition with the pen name Ankita Vijaya Vitala. Most well known among his many disciples is Gopala Dasa who wrote with the pen name Gopala Vitala Later, Gopala Dasa inspired another famous saint poet, Jagannatha Dasa, to take to the Haridasa fold. Jagannatha Dasa is considered the most notable of the late 18th century Haridasas. Apart from a number of devotional songs, he is credited with two important writings. The Harikathamrathasara treats on the philosophy of Madhvacharya. Written in the Shatpati meter with a poetic touch, it contains 32 chapters of 988 stanzas. 
The Tattva Suvali, containing 1,200 pithy and proverbial poems written in the Tripadi meter, is known to have been a consolation to his widowed daughter. Among women, Helavanakit Giriyama pen name, Helavanakit Ranga, early 18th century, and Harapanhali Bhamava pen name, Bhimesa Krishna, 1890, are notable despite their humble education and background. Giriyama authored more than 40 songs, and five narrative poems, the best known among which is the devotional piece Chandrahasana Keta. In a prayer poem about famine, Giriyama wrote, Women are taking out in vessels water from the well gone dry. While bringing it, they think all day, O oh Hari, send the rain to us soon. Other writings Chelavambe, a queen of King Krishnaraja Wodyar I R. was an accomplished Kannada writer. Her notable works include Varanandi Kalyana, written in the Sangatya meter. The story narrates the wedding of Varanandi, the daughter of the Badshah Emperor of Delhi, and the god Chelavaraya Swami of Melkote. In the writing, the author envisioned Varanandi to be a reincarnation of Satyabhama, the consort of the Hindu god Krishna. Her other compositions include Venkatachala Mahatmayam, a lullaby song written in Chopadi four -line verse meter in devotion to the Hindu god Venkateshwara residing on the Vrishaba hill, songs centered on Alamelu Mangama, the consort of the Hindu god Venkateshwara of Tirupati, and songs in praise of the god Chelavanarayana. Shalyada Krishnaraja, a poet and a member from the royal family was proficient writer in Kannada, Telugu and Sanskrit. His contributions to Kannada literature include devotional songs, vachana poems, compositions in Sangatya meter Nija Dipika Ratna, Gadya Anubhava Rasayana, and Kirthane compositions Bhakti Marga Sarovara, Nana Sarovara and Shalyada Arasinavara Takina Kirtane. Nanjaraja was the most noted of the Shaiva writers in the court of King Krishnaraja Wodyar II r. 1734 For his literary taste, he earned the honorific. Natana Bojaraja", a comparison to the medieval king Boja. A native of Kalale town near Nanjangud, Nanjaraja came from an influential family of warriors, statesmen and scholars. He was politically active and is known to have created a power center, holding court in parallel to Krishnaraja too. He was proficient in multiple languages and authored more than 20 writings in Kannada, Sanskrit and Telugu. Among his Kannada writings, Kukajiri Mahatmaya, and a musical composition called Aravatu Muvara Travati, an account of the life of 63 ancient devotees of the god Shiva, is well known. Other well known Shaiva writers were Chenya, who wrote in the Sangatya meter, Padmini Paranaya, 1720, Naranda, who eulogized his patron Krishnaraja II in Soundarya Kavya c. 1740, in Sangatya meter, and Sankara Kavi, Chorabhasava Charitre, 18th century. Lingana Kavi wrote a shampoo historical piece called Keladinaripavajayam in the 1763–1804 period accounting for the chronology and history of the Kaladi dynasty. The work also gives useful information about contemporary kingdoms and states including the Nawabs of Savanur, the Marathas and the Mughals. Notable Jain writers of the period were Payana Ahimsa Charitre, Padmaraja Pujyapada Charitre, 1792, Padmanabha Ramachandra Charitre, Sarala Padmavati Charitre, and Jayendra Karnataka Kuvalayananda. Vaishnava writers who distinguished themselves were Lakshmakavi Bharata in 1728 and Rukmingada Charite, Venkatesha Halasya Mahatmaya, in Shampu meter, Kaneya Krishnarjuna Singara, Timamatya Ramabudaya Kathakusumamanjari, a version of the epic Ramayana, Timarya of Anekal Ananda Ramayana, 1708, Balavadiya Chelava Lilavati, and an encyclopedia of precious stones called Ratnasastra, and Puteya Majuru Arasugala Purvabudaya, c. 1713, and account of the history of the Kingdom of Mysore. Nineteenth century writings Age of prose and drama After the death of Tipu Sultan in the Fourth Anglo-Mysore War 1799, the British took control of the kingdom. They however restored the Wodyars in the smaller princely state of Mysore under the paramountcy of the British Raj. 
The British took direct control of the administration of the kingdom in 1831, after which Maharaja Krishnaraja Wodyar III devoted all his time to developing the fine arts, earning him the honorific Abhinava Bhoja, lit. Modern Bhoja. Krishnaraja III is called the morning star of the Renaissance in Karnataka. A patron of the fine arts, he was an accomplished writer, musician, musicologist, and composer. He gave munificent grants to scholars and was a prolific writer himself. Of the over 40 writings attributed to him, a prose romance called Saugandika Paranaya, in two versions a Sangatya composition and a play is best known. In this writing, the author imaginatively narrates the story of the sage Durvasa who curses Devendra the Hindu god Indra to be born as Sucharitra, the son of King Sugandaraya of Ratnapuri. Devendra's wife Shachidevi takes birth as Sugandika and marries Sucharitra. Apart from composing many devotional songs to his deity, the Hindu goddess Chamundeshwari pen name, Chamundi, he authored three noteworthy treatises, Sri Tatwanidi and Swara Chudamani on music in Sanskrit language and Kannada script, and Sara Sangraha Bharata on dance and music, dealing with tala rhythm in the Kannada language, Aliya Lingaraja Ors, a native of Hegata Devanakot and a son-in-law of Maharaja Krishnaraja III was a prolific writer with over 50 works spanning various genres, devotional songs, musical compositions, kavya classical poems, over 30 Yakshagana plays, and other dramas. Dramas. The author used multiple pen names including Lingaraja and Linganripa. For his contributions to the fine arts, he earned the title Ubaya Kavita Visharada lit. Master of Poetry in Two Languages, Kannada and Sanskrit. Among his best known Kannada works are the poem Prabhavati Paranaya and the two versions of the classical epic Garija Kalyana, Marriage of the Mountain Born Goddess, in Yakshagana style and in Sangatya meter. The writing gives an account of the Garija, the daughter of Hamavanda, her youthful days and her successful penance which resulted in her marriage to the Hindu god Shiva. Yadava, also a court poet, penned two prose pieces, Kalavati Paranaya in the Dandaka Vrita blank verse meter and Vachana Kadambari, a prose rendering of the classical Sanskrit original by poet Bana, the Jain poet Devachandra a native of Kankajiri, was in the court of Krishnaraja III and authored three noted works, Pujyapada Charite, a poem on the life of the Jain saint Pujyapada in Sangatya meter, Ramakathavatara, the poet's Jain version of the Hindu epic Ramayana in Shampu meter, and Rajavalakatha a biographical account of the Mysore royal family, some earlier poets, and stories of religious importance. Another Jain writer of merit was Chandrasagaravarni, author of Kadambapurana and other works. Devalapurata Nanjunda of Nanjangud, a mere court attendant, rose to the level of a court poet for his scholarship in Kannada and Sanskrit. Among his many compositions, Sugandika Paranaya in Sangatya meter, Samudra Mathana Keda a Yakshagana play, Sri Krishna Sarvabhumara Charitre in Sangatya meter, and Krishnendra Jeet in Chopadi meter are well known. He earned the honorific Ubaya Bhasha Kavi, poet of two languages. Modern Kannada prose saw its nascent beginning in 1823 with Mudra Manjusha, seal casket. It is an elaboration of a play summarized in the Sanskrit original, Mudra Rikshasa by Vishakadatta, and was written by Kempu Narayana, a court poet of Maharaja Krishnaraja III. <laughs> <laughs> External influences Eager to spread their gospel in Kannada, Christian missionaries took to the Kannada language. The establishment of the printing press and English language education had a positive effect on Kannada prose. Periodicals and newspapers were published for the first time. The first Kannada language book was printed in 1817 and the first Bible in 1820. Grammar books and dictionaries, meant to help the missionaries in their effort in spreading Christianity, became available. Rev. W. Reeve compiled the earliest English Kannada dictionary in 1824 followed by a Kannada English dictionary in 1832, though the best known work is an 1894 publication by Rev. Ferdinand Kittle. Rev. William Carey published the earliest Kannada grammar in 1817. The influence of English literature and poetry on Kannada was evident from the numerous songs of prayer composed by the missionaries. British officers Lewis Rice and John Faithful Fleet deciphered numerous Kannada inscriptions. 
Rice published several ancient classics and a brief history of Kannada literature while Fleet published folk ballads such as Sangoli Rayana Dang Sangoli Raya's Revolt. The first Kannada newspaper, Mangalora Samachara Mangalore News", was published in Mangalore in 1843. In a few years, printing presses opened in many locations, including at the Mysore Palace in 1840, a surge in the generation of prose narratives and dramatic literature, inspired by writings in English, Sanskrit, modern Marathi and modern Bengali languages culminated in original works in the succeeding decades. In the field of prose, translation of English classics such as Yatrakana Sanchara The Pilgrim's Progress by Bunyan, 1847 and Robinson Crusoe, 1857 set the trend. Translations from vernacular languages were popular too and included the Marathi classic Yamuna Prayatana 1869 and the Bengali work Durjasanandini 1885. In the genre of drama, inspiration came from translations of Sanskrit and English plays. Shakuntala and Raghavendrarao Nataka Othello by Churamori Sahajiri Rao 1869, Pramilarjuniya by Srikantesa Gauda and Vasanthayamini Swapnachamatkara Nataka by K. Vasudevachar Midsummer Night's Dream, Macbeth by Srikantesa Gauda, King Lear by M. S. Puttana, Ramavarma Lilavati Romeo and Juliet by C. Ananda Rao paved the way, Basavapa Shastri a native of Mysore and court poet of Maharaja Krishnaraja III and Maharaja Chamaraja Wodyar IX, earned the honorific Kannada Nataka Patamaha lit. Father of Kannada stage for his contributions to drama. His contribution to dramatic literature in the form of anthologies, translations and adaptations from English and Sanskrit, learned editions, and successful integration of musical compositions into drama is well accepted. His translations from English to Kannada include Shurasena Charite Othello. His Sanskrit to Kannada translations include, Kalidasa, Abhinayana Shakuntala, Vikramorvashiya, Malavikagnamitra, Uttara Rama Charite, Chanda Kushika Nataka, Malathi Madhava and Ratnavali. Other well-known Kannada writers in Chamaraja IX's court were S.G. Narasimacharya, Dondo Narasimha Mulabalu, Santa Kavi and B. Ventakacharya. The earliest modern novels in the Kannada language are the Suryakantha by Lakshman Gadagkar and the Indrabhai by Gulvadi Venkata Rao. The later work is reformist and decried corruption and encouraged widow remarriages. Suri Venkatamana Shastri's modern social play Igapa Hegedeya Vivaha Prahasana Igapa Hegade's farce of marriage. 1887 and Daraswar's Kanya Vikraya 1887 carried a similar reformist outlook while Santa Kavi's Vatsalaharana 1885 drew upon mythological and folk themes. <laughs> <laughs> Developments up to the mid-20th century In 1881, the British handed back administrative powers to the Wodyar family. Up to 1947, when the kingdom acceded to the Union of India, the incumbent Maharaja was assisted by a Dewan Prime Minister, the administrative chief of Mysore. These were times of positive social and economic change, the independence movement and modern nationalism, all of which influenced literature. Kannada literature saw the blossoming of the Navadaya lit. New Beginning. Style of writings in genres such as lyrical poems, drama, novels and short stories, with the strong influence of English literature. B. M. Srikantaya's English Gitagalu, English Songs, 1921, was the path-breaker in the genre of modern lyrical poetry. The earliest stalwarts in the field of modern historical drama and comedy were T. P. Kailasam and A. N. Swami Venkatadri Iyer, also called Samsa. Kailasam sought to critique social developments by producing plays that questioned the utility of the modern education system in Talu Gadi, 1918, The Hollow and the Solid and the dowry system in Talai Katok Kulain, wages for tying the Mongol Sutra. Samsa's ideal king, Narasaraja Wodyar, is the protagonist of the play Vigata Vikramarya, the Wicked Vikramarya, 1925, initial development in the genre of historical novels, in the form of translations and original works, sought to rekindle the nationalistic feelings of Kanadigas. Venkatachar and Galaganath were among the first to write such novels. Galaganath's Madhava Karuna Vilasa described the founding of the Vijayanagara Empire, while his Kanadagara Karmakatha Kanadiga's fateful tale", 
described the empire's decline. In 1917, Alor Venkata Rao wrote the famous Karnataka Gata Vaibhava, a summary of earlier works by Fleet, Rice, Pindarkar, and Robert Sewell, appealing to the Kanadigas to remember their glorious past, their ancient traditions and culture, their great rulers, saints, and poets. Other well known works were Kur Vasudevachar's Yadu Maharaja describing the rise of the Wodyar dynasty, and Vasudeva's Arya Kurdi. The tradition of novels started by Gulvati Venkata Rao 1899 reached maturity in 1915 with M.S. Puttana's Matadano Maharaya, Sir, as you sow, so you reap, a historical novel written in flowing prose and whose theme is set in the times of Maharaja Krishnaraja III. To Puttana also goes the credit for writing the earliest modern biography, Kunigal Ramashastriya Charitre, the story of Kunigal Ramashastri. The genre of short story made its initial beginnings with Panj Mangesh Rao, M. N. Kamath and Kur Vasudevachar, but it was Masti Venkatesh Iyengar who stole the limelight with and set a trend for others to follow in his Kalavu Sana Kathagalu A Few Short Stories, 1920, and Sana Kathagalu Short Stories, 1924. The efforts of these early pioneers were to become a forerunner for the Golden Age in the decades to follow. A long list of noted poets and writers followed: D. R. Bendra, Gari, The Wing, 1932, and Govinda Pai, Gilavindu, Parrots, 1930. Perhaps the most acclaimed writers of lyrical poems that synthesized the work of the English Romantics with native traditions: K. Shivram Karanth, the noted novelist and author of Chomana Duty, Choma's Toil. 1933, Kuvampu, one of Kannada's doyan poets who showed his brilliance in using the blank verse in his masterpiece epic and magnum opus, Sri Ramayana Darshanam V. K. Gokak, a writer of drama, criticism, songs and epic Bharata Sindhu Rashmi, 1940, D. V. Gundapa, the philosopher-writer to whom is ascribed writings in just about every genre, though his most notable work is the Mankuthimana Kaga, Dull Thimas Rigamarol. 1943, which closely compares with the wisdom poems of the late medieval poet Sarvina. <laughs> 